Here comes the sun. I'm considering getting up now. It's just about six o'clock. As you see, the sun has just come up. Um, I haven't got anywhere specific to go today. I just have to make a start because my next actual stop is 250 miles or allegedly six and a half hours away. Well, that's going to be a lot more hours away, um, a lot more driving hours and a lot more actual hours anyway. So I'm going to stop somewhere en route today. Um, so what I'm what I'm thinking, if I get up and have a coffee and then go, and then my my big Scottish breakfast I bought yesterday, I'll have as a brunch. That will at least get me down this road and out of the way early, because uh, this road up to Ardnamurkin Point is about thirty miles. It'll take you an hour and a half. Single track. You have to keep pulling over in little um, laybys, which are every fifty to hundred yards. It's absolutely unbelievably slow. Uh, it's a lot of third gear um, because of that. So if I go early, I should miss much of that. Well, I think my idea of an early start is going to come to nothing. I'm going to have to wait for this to burn off a little. Bit unfortunate. The sun is starting to burn off some of this mist. Those mist-covered mountains are a home now for me. So I think I'm going to make a move. It's about seven o'clock. Let's beat the traffic. I could just stand here and reflect a while. That's incredible. The French have a dessert called Ile Flottante, floating islands. It's meringue in kind of a thin custard. This is a real Ile Flottante. Just outside Glen Finnan, where the Jacobite Rising Monument is, there's also another monument, a memorial, to the soldiers of the First World War. Being in Scotland, this Tommy is wearing a, is wearing a kilt. The rear of the memorial records the names Archibald MacLean, Angus MacLeod, James McLaren, Duncan Mackenzie, Colin Mackenzie, George Blythe, Donald McAlpin. I'm just outside Inverlochy Castle. Sounds like there's a train going past at the moment because there is a train going past at the moment. Anyway, I've driven for two and a half hours, 75 miles, mostly single track, windy road, fog and all that, as you've seen. So it's now time to stop for breakfast, proper breakfast. So all I've had is coffee so far. So I'm going to make another coffee, but I've got the stove and the ridge monkey out. Got me condiments, got me eggs, Scottish eggs, six potato scones, scones. Whatever you want to call them. And I picked this up yesterday, a breakfast pack. It's got four pork links, which are small chipolatas, four beef lawn slices, never had those, lawn sausage, four black pudding slices, and two haggis slices. So I'm going to have half that, obviously, because some of that's going to be for tomorrow's breakfast or the next day. So I'm looking forward to this. Have a proper Scottish breakfast. I'll make some sort of pretense to it being healthy by sticking a tomato half in there. There you go, why not, eh? Now that's a Scottish breakfast. Black pudding, haggis, egg, tomato, potato scones, link sausages, or pork links, and 
that lawn sausage. Look. Mm. That was great. That was really good. So now I've finished my breakfast, I'm going to go have a look at this castle. The ruins of. It's a delicious breakfast, as you saw. So it'll take some beating. Can this castle do it? Let's have a look through the old archway. There it is. Nice towers on it. So, Inverlochy Castle. What do we know about it? Well, that's what it used to look like. It was built in about 1280 by the Lord of Bannock, Badenoch, and commanded the strate strategic southern entrance of the Great Glen, and the bat and three battles were fought here. So let's uh, let's go have a look. Yeah. Through the entrance, we have a bit of renovation work and repair work there. The, the tower there. A very pleasant little sight. And then you wander straight down to the river. And that'd be the railway bridge. See fish topping as well. It's always nice to see. The water has a very brownish tint to it. Wow, it's crystal clear. Look at that. That's an impressive little castle that. Must look quite magnificent in its day. Certainly substantial. Cracking result. I spoke to Penton Ferries just now and I managed to change my booking to uh, sail to Orkney from Gills Bay to St Margaret's Hope from uh, basically from uh, the 24th of July to tomorrow which is the 22nd which gives me an extra two days to explore Orkney because um, I really want to go there and see everything there there's so much to see um, my grandfather was there for a while on the island of Hoy, so I want to spend at least two, if not more, days at Hoy. Um, I'd like to dive, I'd like to kayak, if I can. Um, and there's so much wartime history to see there. So it's, it's a fantastic top result. It just means I've got to do uh, 180 miles more today haven't done 75 already but I don't think it's gonna be a massive problem and uh, at the moment where are we we're just coming out of Fort William so I'm gonna be going near to Ben Nevis which I now have a valid excuse not to climb for the benefit of you viewers because quite frankly I wouldn't have done anyway and the very thought of doing it, it makes me feel quite uh, quite ill. <laughs> I'm not as young and fit as I used to be and I was never fit enough anyway. Well, I was kind of hoping I might see this but I didn't actually look for where it was. I think my parents actually came here once. This is the Commando Memorial up near Ben Nevis range. United we conquer. Description reads, in memory of the officers and men of the commandos who died in the Second World War, 1939-45, this country was their training ground. And for anyone who's ever been told to run up ill, carrying pack, webbing, weapon, wearing a helmet, you can imagine that this sort of country is not the nicest to do. Well, I timed that really badly. This is a Caledonian Canal, and uh, I had an amber light. 
and it turned red as I got here. So I'm now stuck for a little while and I need to make up the time. Must be roasting in there today. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we've all stopped for this one uh, one boat to come through. So hopefully, he's going to hit the engines and go through. A bunch of kayakers on the other side. I doubt they're wanting to go through, but maybe. Oh man. I was too slow getting the camera on. I'm here, I'm here, on the shores of Loch Ness. I am. And oh, I'm sure I saw something. Sure, sure I saw something. Something on, on the water or in the water or something. Ah well, see if my ankle will uh, get some relief in Loch Ness, huh? <laughs> Just a very quick two minute stop. Um, like, I know it's a dog. It's a dog. Dogs aren't monsters. They're certainly not dinosaurs. I, mean, I think as soon as I've stopped, I may as well have a pee. But you ain't going to see that monster. Not without a macro lens. Well, I've been stuck behind this slow coach for ages. Crawling up hills, having to drop gears because of him. Talk about a busman's holiday. Size of that thing, ludicrous. Well, I wasn't planning on doing the NC500, which is apparently a thing. Um, but thanks to Google Maps diverting me across country to uh, apparently take me the quickest route. Uh, I'm kind of inadvertently doing the NC 490 odd. Oi, oi, cheers Google. Thanks, I could have could, like just added that in and said, yeah I did the NC 500. I did the NC 500. Someone would say to me, yeah we think they're doing the NC 500 and I'd say, I've done it, I've done it. Accidentally. Well, a brief unscheduled stop. I'm just at the Glen Morangie Distillery. There's a few distilleries about, but I didn't have any intention of going to any of them. It's just that I always used to buy my dad 18-year-old um, Glen Morangie when I was on the ferries uh, because it was exclusive to Britney Ferries, and um, yeah, he's probably still got some bottles left. Uh, so the most recent would have been 1997, which makes them a bit more than 18 years old. So they still do the Glen Ranji 18 year single malt, it's extremely rare. And I think that uh, my dad's 18 year malt is nearly 40 years old now, that's pretty good going. So, a brief look inside the distillery, and the smell is fantastic. Mm. Well, I'm on the A9, running the uh, NC500 route still, um, heading up towards Thurso, Wick, not sure, sure which way it's taking me, up to Dunnett Head. Uh, we're up high, here you go, welcome to Caithness and the fog is, is here, or the mist. I'm about 15 miles from Thurso and uh, going slow, stuck behind a tanker. There's uh, little to see here. I've come off the NC500 route. It's quite frankly, it's boring. Um, this, this area is, is relatively dull. I'm quite bored with this drive now. Oh, there's a dead deer. That's on the wrong side of the road for you to even see. That's a big one. I've oh, had enough of this to find it now. Well, I've made
made it to Thurso. It's about five o'clock. I'm going to have a little late lunch. I bought these things. They're called butteries. They're an Aberdeenshire thing. Not sure exactly what they are. We're going to make a crisp sandwich with two of those and some haggis and cracked pepper crisps. Should be good. Haggis and black pepper uh, crisps in a buttery sandwich. That's nice. I've not had a crisp sandwich for so long. Buttery. Um, I'm not sure how to describe it. Sort of like a, a cakey type texture. Flaky, sort of layered sort of roll. Hmm, I'm happy I bought six of those and the crisps. Well that's it. That's as far north as you can go on mainland UK. Done it head. It's a sheer cliff seagulls are way below me so there you go YouTube followers I have done the four cardinal points the most easterly most southerly most westerly and most northerly points of mainland UK in my grandfather's camper van in exactly three weeks and 2502 miles brilliant and this is a super extra treat for me here at Dunnett Head. I haven't seen these since I went all the way to uh, Pembrokeshire. Looking there, okay, you've got puffins. One's just flown off. There's one puffin and there's two, oh, I'm not sure what they are, black and white things. So we've got Dunnett Head Lighthouse and Foghorn behind me, turning round, you've got the cliffs, and next to the wall is a point at the end of the land. I guess access for diving is going to be pretty tricky, you'd have to do it by a boat. So there we go, there's a puffin, I thought maybe Guillemot but I think it was actually a razor bill. Ooh. Cracking job, Grandpa's van. Well, why not carry on bathing the ankles in this peaty pond? Look at that coppery color. It's like having a spray tan if I stay in there too long. That's me stopped for the night. Next stop, Gills Bay, tomorrow morning to catch the ferry to Orkney. Lovely little pond there, and a larger one there, and Dunnett Head there. Well, I've completed Scotland now that I've done Dunnett Head, so in honour of that, I'm going to do as requested by my YouTube fan Slabby Rider. Ta-da! I am wearing a Scottish skirt. Hope we don't fall down. I'm pleased that it didn't fall down for the simple reason that I am, in honour of that memorial I saw earlier, Commando! Well, I promised to do it yesterday, but I didn't have time and I was too knackered by the end of it, so I'm going to do it now. Time for the hair to come off. Look at that. Isn't this brilliant look? I'm gonna look human again. Having such a good time in Scotland. 
as bold as a coot and as clean as a whistle. And all that hair can now become natural nesting material. Scottish dinner tonight, McEwan's export in a tin. Well, let's have a taste of it. How's it like? It's alright. 